What's up, y'all? I don't know about you guys, but in between eating and trying to decide if I need to start cutting my own hair, I've been trying to knock a few things off my list. Making videos, trying to get this place cleaned up. One of the videos that I wanted to do was on improvisation, variation, that sort of stuff, because I've got a lot of people asking me about that. And I could never really come up with a good way to do it, but I think I've got an option. You can give it a shot, uh, but right now I'm going to get something to eat. So, see you in a minute. Much better. Now, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to play the melody of the tune on the whistle, and the tune we're going to use is the Silver Spear, uh, which I've done a video on probably a thousand years ago. I'll put a link up here. If you want to learn the melody, uh, I would use that video. That's really not what this video is going to be about. This video is about improvisation, variation. So I'm going to play the basic melody here on the whistle. I'm going to try to keep it fairly straightforward, fairly simple, and then I'm going to overlay the flute on top of that. And I'm going to use the flute, I'll use the keyless flute, so I'm not cheating and using keys, uh, which we wouldn't have on the whistle. But otherwise it'd be a little hard if I was just playing two whistles. It's it'd be kind of hard to figure out which sound is coming from which instrument. So I figure that'll work pretty well. And then after all that's done, you can go back and just kind of break down some of the things that I did. Hopefully I'll be able to kind of talk through why I did some of these, why I made these decisions. So we'll start off by playing just the basic melody here, and then we'll overlay the flute on top of it. So that's how I like to do it, mixing it up a little bit. Let's go break it down, all right? Whoop. Now, keep in mind, we're not talking about massive variations, improv kind of stuff. In Irish music, it's pretty subtle. It's usually just one bar, slight rhythmic change, or a slight melodic change, or a harmony note. Literally just one or two notes here and there. It's not like jazz, where you're kind of going completely off the reservation. It's very, very subtle. Um, and that's kind of what I think makes it so much fun. It's just little bits here and there. So let's break it down here. So I'll just start playing away. Okay, so right off the bat, basically what I'm just doing is droning. One thing to keep in mind, it's important to know the melody. Obviously, if you don't know the melody, you probably shouldn't be messing about changing it, because uh, you're probably going to hit something that doesn't quite fit. So I like to start off with a, with a bit of a drone. I just think it sounds kind of cool, helps build it up. Your safe bet is playing a 1 and a 5. And if you don't know what that means, that's the in the case of a tune in D, like this one is, the 1 is the, the tonic, the melody note D, and the 5 would be an A. So that's what I'm doing here. I think I threw in an F sharp, a, a third, which works because, again, I, I knew what the melody was. And then we're off into the melody here. Okay, so that, rather than playing in the, the main melody goes F sharp to A, I'm just sitting on the, on the F sharp. Uh, holding that note out. And when I say holding it out, we're talking about basically changing it from a quarter or an eighth note to a quarter note. Not not just not a drone, but it's just kind of extending the note a little bit, making it sound intentional, doing it a couple of times through. So the other thing in that in the beginning of that, um, the main melody does jump up the octave um, on the flute because it's got that cool low kind of resonance to it. Sometimes I'll drop it down and just keep it in the lower octave. It just sounds kind of neat. And again, building, giving yourself some place to go. 
Uh, so now we're in the B part here. There again, the B part does jump up the octave. I'm keeping it down low for this first time through. Hitting that F sharp, holding it out again, rather than doing a roll like I'm doing in the main melody. Ah, in that one, the main melody note is a B. So instead of that, I'm hitting a D. Now I'm going to repeat that in the second time through, but I'm going to jump the octave. So in this case, I'm actually playing the second octave D. Next time through, I'm going to play the third octave D, which we'll get to in a second. Again, just kind of setting the stage, doing something, making it sound intentional. Again, I repeated that, the same thing, hitting that D. Again, holding the F sharp. And in this part, the second time through, I am playing it up the octave, kind of matching the melody. Yeah. That thing, uh, basically it's sort of a walk down, so G, F sharp, E, D. I wish I could say I came up with that one on my own. I was at a session in New York and uh, everybody was playing that tune at Mach 3. So everybody was doing crazy stuff and the fiddle player who was sitting next to me, uh, who's uh, a, an amazing player, uh, did that. And I thought, ooh, I gotta remember that, I gotta lock that in. Uh, I just thought it was cool. So I like to bust that out when I get the chance. Uh, in that part, um, I did the opposite. I jumped up the octave, even though it doesn't actually doesn't typically go there in the in the A part. But it's usually only B, in the B part that it does that. Um, in that case, rather than doing that walk down, I kind of faked it. Um, just hit the G and then stayed on the A, where the melody does something a little bit different. Again, very subtle kind of stuff. Jumping the octave there again. That time I just held out the F sharp. Usually it's a roll. Yeah, so you're doing a roll on a G and a roll on an F. In that case, I just held the F, uh, F sharp like I did in the beginning part of it. On the second octave, I uh, did kind of the same type of thing where I'm holding the, the uh, the A. Bouncing off of the G, but basically holding the A where the melody changes a little bit. That's the other option is rather than adding notes, you can simplify or subtract notes. There I hit that third octave D. The third octave D is a little tricky on these. On the whistle it's really shrill. The flute it can be. Um, and it's just kind of tricky to, to land accurately sometimes. But if you can get it, it's cool because there's very, very few tunes that use that. Most tunes stop at that high B. Um, so if you can hit that and make it intentional and make it sound, uh, uh, sound you know, kind of cool uh, as a good melody, or a good, excuse me, good harmony, in that case the main melody notes a B, so I'm playing a high D above it, I just think it sounds kind of neat, and it kind of makes people's ears perk up. That time just rolling on the A, uh, staying on there and hitting that G to kind of accent it a little bit, like I did in the lower octave. Hanging on the F sharp again. And there again, now I'm dropping back down the octave. Um, even though the, the B part is typically played up high, it adds just a bit of a separation because you've got that octave separation between the flute and the whistle. That time I rolled on the F sharp. Um, typically it's F sharp A, yeah, F sharp A. There I just held on the F sharp and did a roll rather than a solid uh, single. No, quarter note, dotted quarter note, one of those things. And then to finish, I land on a harmony. Land on the F sharp instead of the A. You could land on the D as well. I do that sometimes. The cool thing about the variations and, and this, what we're calling improv, it's honestly, it's, it's my favorite part about playing Irish music when you're playing with other people. Because it's sort of like you're having a conversation with people. Somebody will do one variation and the person next to you, you might think, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm going to throw it back at them and they'll do that and maybe they'll hear it. And, oh, I like that. Let me, let me try something a little bit different and kind of play off that. And, and it is like you're having a conversation as you're playing this music with very, very subtle changes. So that it's one of those things that if you know, you know. The people who are in there who are paying attention will hear it and go, mm -hmm, kind of cool. 
or mm, no, that wasn't very good, because that certainly happens from time to time. That's where you just want to try, do a little bit of trial and error and see what works. If you play something that you like, lock it in, remember it. Maybe bring it up next time you're at a session. If you try it and it doesn't, remember that too. I'm not going to go there next time around. I'm going to pick, pick a different note or a different rhythm, a different harmony note. Hopefully this is of some value to you guys. Um, again, this is my favorite part of playing this type of music is uh, the ornaments and the variations and just kind of making a tune your own and uh, playing off what other people are doing. So hopefully it helps. Let me know what you think. Positive, negative, any questions and comments and all that stuff, let me know. I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers, guys.